Yeah, looking at the Clemson Tigers, as you mentioned, it all starts with that uh, defensive front. Uh, not extremely deep, but they haven't had to be. Austin Bryant coming off the edge, Clellan Farrell in the middle, along with Christian Wilkins. Uh, just just exceptional play up front. They lost Ben Bulware, who was their heart and soul at middle linebacker, but certainly have replaced him uh, more athletically in, in that regard. Ryan Carter is a guy that makes big plays out of the secondary and did against Alabama last season as well. Uh, It was interesting, Stephen, because I looked uh, over the last two meetings in the championship games of 15 and 16 and just recorded a couple segments, kind of reminded me of what happened in those games. It's interesting when you get two programs together, one that's at the elite level and has been there since 2008 in Alabama, of course, and then Clemson, which was crescendoing to that point, and then you see the similarities between the two games and the similarities between the personnel, but you also see much different games in another sense. So Deshaun Watson, of course, being the the known factor in both of those games, but the different quarterback play of Jake Coker, and I think it's underappreciated how truly well he played in that first championship game in throwing for 335 yards, hitting O.J. Howard on two long touchdown passes, And uh, the difference in the game being twofold for me in that Alabama just sent Derrick Henry time and time and time again, 36 times at that Clemson defense, while Wayne Goleman and the Clemson offensive rushing attack wasn't able to gain that kind of ground against Alabama. So, So the rushing disparity was evident from the running back position. And then also the two key special teams plays, of course, Nick Saban not wanting Deshaun Watson to have one more possession than him in the fourth quarter. So with 10 and a half minutes left, tied at 24, he goes for the outside kick. And then after taking a 31-27 lead when Clemson couldn't match the touchdown, they had to kick a field goal. Of course, Kenyon Drake, who I saw score a touchdown in the NFL with the Dolphins today, uh, take it 95 yards for the touchdown that pretty much sealed that win. And then, of course, the next season – Alabama just beating up Deshaun Watson in the first quarter and just beating down the Clemson defense up front with a running game with Bo Scarborough. But when he left uh, in the third quarter, I believe it was, it turned into a different game, turned into a shootout. Of course, Deshaun Watson and Mike Williams started to uh, connect. And just to see Williams in particular, but also you mentioned Deion Kane, you mentioned Ray Ray McLeod, those guys – beating NFL defensive backs time and time again with precision passing and out uh, fighting defensive backs for the football in the Alabama secondary, just the exceptional wide receiver versus defensive back play uh, between two elite programs was exceptional. And of course, Deshaun Watson to Hunter Renfro for his third touchdown against Alabama uh, in two years and the one that uh, won it all on the last play of the game. Those two games were massive. I, like I said, I was, I was there in University of Phoenix Stadium two years ago in the first matchup in 2015 uh, with a 2016 title game off the 2015 season watching Jacob Coker. And sometimes people fail to realize or don't understand uh, Jacob Coker and uh, Jalen Hurts both have the same flaws. I've been able to interview both. I've seen both. I've studied both. I've watched both. And when you talk about holding the ball too long, not always trusting what you're seeing, Um, not being able to really, you know, get downfield with pinpoint passing. You know, both guys struggle in similar areas, but, you know, Jay Coker found a way in the college football playoff to get hot. You know, prior to the championship game against Clemson, this was a guy in Coker who went 25 of 30 against Michigan State for 286 yards and two touchdown passes to Calvin Ridley and a 38 to nothing win for the Tide over the Spartans. And then the very next game against uh, Clemson, let it all go on the line, had a monster day throwing the football, just found a way to get hot at the right time. And this is a guy in Jay Coker in whom it took him five years to be a quarterback, five years Two different teams, two different systems, two different programs, two different coaching staffs headlined by Florida State and Jimbo Fisher. Of course, Jimbo Fisher now at Texas A&M, but Jimbo Fisher at that time at Florida State. And, of course, Nick Saban at at Alabama. This being Jalen Hurts' second year, he has an opportunity to really 
uh, have a chance to put himself in a position to go on a tear and have that same success. But number one, it starts off, Mark, with that offensive line, being able to give him time, adequate time in the pocket. Uh, number two, uh, Brian Dable, putting him in situations to be successful, whether it's attacking with the pass game early if you see something, or if the run game is having success, let that have its way and then bring Jalen on as that run game continues to go. And then number three, uh, Jalen Hurts, trusting what you're seeing. If you got a guy wide open downfield and you see that, put the ball on him. Allow your guys to step up, make plays, whether it's Jalen Hurt, whether it's uh, Calvin Ridley, excuse me, Cam Sims, Jerry, Judy, um, of course, uh, Henry Ruggs, Herb Smith Jr., whoever it is that's streaking down the sideline, whoever it is that's finding space in the zone, whoever it is that's running a particular route and they're open and you see them open, Give them a chance to make a play, and that's the biggest thing for Alabama coming up in this game against Clemson. Clemson's got an elite defensive front. For Alabama, it's neutralizing those guys and finding ways to create that edge.